Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is SL Gamer Guy, and uh, well, this is a warning. This video is not very good quality. So uh, it's been a long time since I filmed anything, so the camera work isn't very good. The planning <laughs> and forethought isn't quite there, so I'm trying to make it work in editing. But uh, just figured I'd let you know. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. <clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is SL Gamer Guy, and today we have the 1970 Impala Custom. And we are going to be replacing the vacuum modulator for the transmission. So, the vacuum modulator, I should explain, it is one of the components that uh, causes your transmission to shift. Maybe downshift. No, nope. shift. Uh, mine is no good, it shifts horribly right now, so gotta fix it. Have my piece of cardboard laid out, got a work lamp down there. You will need half inch wrench and possibly a, uh, well, yeah, probably. You will need an oil catch pan. Uh, I've already done some work on the transmission, so there shouldn't be any fluid in it. Well, not enough fluid to matter, but Still should have a catch pan for the sake of it. So, we're gonna get underneath there. I'm gonna set this camera up so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna get at replacing it. Okay, so we are underneath the car. Here's the uh, transmission oil pan. There is the vacuum modulator, and there's one bolt on top of it that you gotta remove for the bracket. So, so, hopefully you can see, this is sort of a tight space, so I apologize if you can't see everything. I'm going to remove that one bolt. Come on. Just like so. Sorry if the uh, camera's moving a bit, I'm laying on top of the piece of cardboard that the camera's sitting on. We got our one bolt holding that bracket in. Get my uh, catch pan in place, just in case something happens. Because there is a good chance the transmission fluid will come out, but I don't think will on this one. And I was mistaken. <laughs> Just get put the new one right on. Stop that leak. Clean this up a bit so I can hopefully lay back down without getting too much transmission fluid on my hair. And, uh, come on. I'm just cleaning up the uh, bracket, which looks like so. It just holds it on there. There's not too much force. What did I? There's the bolt. Here's my wrench. Swapped around. Now, I'm getting rust in my mouth. Pull off this old rubber line so I got a little more room to work with. Also, if I'm not mistaken, when a vacuum modulator fails, there is a good chance that your transmission fluid will start disappearing. And the reason for that is if that diaphragm gets punctured, there is a vacuum that is pulling and essentially pumping your transmission fluid out and into your intake, where it is then being burned. 
So if your transmission fluid's just disappearing, you might want to check out the vacuum modulator. There we go. Now, also I'm not usually one for safety, but when you're doing this, uh, you definitely want safety glasses on. I'm sorry, I'm going to be all up in the way, but it's, you just got to remember, it's the same process, just in reverse. Also, I don't know if I have uh, specified this, but this is a THM 350, a Turbo Hydromatic 350 uh, transmission. I'm trying and failing to find the, uh, the bolt hole. Right. There it is not. Okay, I'm gonna try flipping this bracket around. Let's see if that makes a difference at all. Yeah, that seems that seems more proper. Yep, there we go. And this bracket here, it doesn't put a whole lot of uh, force on the modulator, because there, there is not a whole lot of force that the modulator is pushing back with. It's just to hold it in there, to keep that gasket nice and, uh, nice and tight. Uh, so that way you don't have an ATF leak. Because ATF is highly flammable. <laughs> Gotta love the taste of iron oxide in the morning. Okay. Also, I would recommend, if you have one, a, uh, a fine-tooth ratchet, because you don't have a whole lot of swing. And this, it's a steel bolt going into what I believe to be either a, eh, judging by feeling, probably a steel block. Could be mistaken, though. So I'm just gonna, you know, torque spec of about a grunt. Yeah. yeah. Call that good. Now, I don't know about yours, but mine came with the little piece of uh, bent vacuum line here. So, Put that back together. Oh, come on. Yeah, you got it. And these are all uh, barbed fittings. So, you don't need a hose clamp or anything on them. Not to mention, it's a vacuum line, so they're only going to pull each other closer together. And uh, there we go. Here, with my flashlight in place, I shall try to move that camera over. Let's see if you get a good look at uh, how this is set up here. So you got your vacuum line coming into the modulator. There's that uh, bracket and bolt holding it on through that uh, little ledge right there on it. And there you go. That is one brand new THM350 vacuum modulator replaced. <laughs>